Game is looking fantabulous. Um, look at that foliage. Yeah. Remember <laughs> yeah. when everyone used to talk about foliage, and it was like a big foliage, like arms it's all race. all foliage and yeah. water. You guys won that arms race based well, on what I'm you. seeing here. Welcome back to PlayStation Underground. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Crash Bandicoot, the Insane Trilogy. Specifically, we're taking a look at Crash 3 Warped, the third and final game in this trilogy. I'm joined by uh, my friend and compatriot, Sid Schumann. Why, hello. And we're also joined by Dan Tengwe from uh, v Vicarious Visions. That's right. I almost said Vicarious Visions, but, like <laughs> the, the way that I messed it up earlier. Got a real problem with that word. That's, that's a really <laughs> tough word for me. So uh, let's dive on into some gameplay here, and uh, we can start talking about all kinds of stuff. Um, so this is obviously the uh, long-awaited re remaster, remake, re, -re so, something yeah. of. So this is a remaster. So ah. You want to go <laughs> and he, and here's a, here's a good example so of uh, we'll see who is obsolete. A remastered uh, cinematic. Let's I, I got to say though, I mean, I feel like you're selling yourself slightly short on a remaster because I've never seen anything kind of to this level. Right. Um, right. So. Uh, so yeah, we consider it kind of a triple-A remaster. Okay. Mm. And um, you know, our team's been very experienced making triple-A games, and we've tried to treat this as we would uh, any other title we make, original or not. So, you know, a lot of love and care has gone into this. Um, <laughs> I mean, we just, you know, take a step back real quick and <laughs> just kind of look at the scene. I mean. Look at those uh, physics. They didn't yes. have this kind of stuff back on the PS1. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Remaster only with yeah. the power and precision. By the way, yeah. we are uh, we're seeing this uh, on. Get, uh, so so this does this supports PS4 yeah, yeah. Pro. Yes, it does. Uh, and uh, tell me a little bit about what you guys are uh, doing on the PS4 Pro yep. version. So for the PS4 Pro, we've enhanced the graphics and up the resolution to look even uh, sharper and more colorful than uh, ever. Nice. So we're uh, we're sticking with uh, 1080 uh, here for for YouTube, but. Uh, game is looking fantabulous. Um, look at that foliage. Yeah. Remember <laughs> yeah. when everyone used to talk about foliage, and it was like a big foliage, like arms it was all race. All foliage and yeah. water. You guys won that arms race based well, on what you. I'm seeing here. Yeah. No, that was a big, big push for us. I think, uh, you know, you think back when uh, Crash Bandicoot first came out on the PlayStation One, and it was, by my eyes, probably the best looking game on the PlayStation One. And that's a, that's a huge legacy to live up to. So, you know, when we took this on, we said we've got to make that big of an impression. And uh, I like to think that, yeah, I mean, we've got beautiful amounts of foliage. It's just a lush environment. And of obviously, as we've seen, you know, both Crash and his enemies just ooze personality. Okay, which is super go important. For that. Care careful with that one. Up. You gonna you gonna go for it? Oh, oh! oh! almost. Yeah. Smooth. <laughs> so well, at least he got the one up. Yeah. So. <laughs> so so death, death is a a large part of the uh, <laughs> Crash franchise, and we try to make sure that you know, yeah. That's one way to Each do it. death just it needs to be funny. It needs to be amusing, and uh, yeah, I think we have over like a hundred death animations in the game. Really? It's, yeah. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so what what does that process look like when you're going back to the original games uh, created by uh, uh, Naughty Dog and uh, kind of redoing all this? How painstaking is that process of trying to get everything just right, but also yeah. making it work in this yeah. new it, version? It, it is. It is well painstaking is a very good way of <laughs> describing it. But uh, we had uh, the luck, I guess, of getting <laughs> getting a hold. <laughs> Getting a hold of the original level meshes. Oh, okay. ah. so that was kind of the the cornerstone that we built on, and that allowed us to basically then remaster the gameplay, knowing that if we fit within those level parameters, it would at least be in the right direction. But you know, after that, it, it just involves a lot of iteration. It involves playing the original game. It involves you know, you know, just scrubbing back and forth. It also really involves, I think. Um, just having a team who's really fans of the original and know the original yeah, like yeah. front and back. Um, we've got some team members where this was the game of their childhood. <laughs> and, you know, uh, I'll give you a good example, uh, jump. You know how critical jump is for a platformer. Of course. And so, you know, we're like, oh yeah, jump. Yeah, we got that. We had that in our previous games and we implemented jump the first time and we go to them they'll be like yeah no you guys didn't get it <laughs> like all right 
So we go back to the drawing board, work on it again, and they're like, oh yeah, it's it, it's better. <laughs> but you guys still didn't get it. And so we have probably iterated on jump more than I think pretty much anything else in this wow. game. Yeah. And, uh, but the end result, uh, yeah. The end result will hopefully speak for itself. Well, yeah, it looks incredible, but it looks it looks like it feels exactly like yeah. I remember it. Well, that was what we were shooting for, yep. so it's good to hear. <laughs> yeah, it's always kind of a, a difficult uh, bridge to gap, I guess, trying to mm -hmm. uh, revisit something that people remember in such a specific way. But if you go back and play the original Crash games, they're probably not quite exactly as you remember them. This yep. looks like how I remember the old Crash games. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of those things where we know, like I was saying before about the levels, <laughs> you know you gotta have certain things. The and guy's in his underwear. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he blasted his robe off. <laughs> <laughs> you know you have to have certain things that are exactly faithful to the original, but you also want to create just a, a little room for the, the team to kind of innovate and you know add their own stamp yeah. and add a few surprises <laughs> so that, you know, are there any specific examples of the team leaving their own mark on this that you can share? Uh, certainly. I mean, you know, we can take uh, kind of a large example. Uh, when we looked at that uh, two-headed ogre dude, you know, he was uh, swinging giant turkey clubs <laughs> instead of, you know, regular clubs. And that was just a flourish that the art team thought would be funny. Oh. <laughs> a little extra flavor to it. But, you know, taken on a broader level, uh, we also decided to, you know, take some of the well, I think it's the benefit of hindsight, I guess. You know, the game's been out 20 years, and, you know, fans have endlessly dissected it. So, you know, we were able to take, say, a feature that we thought worked really well for the third game and then apply it to the other two. Mm. Uh, the biggest of those would be time trials. Um, oh, cool. Time trials were a fantastic innovation at the time uh, that was added exclusively for the third game and created a lot of longevity. But, um, you know, we had to build it, and we're like, well geez, why don't we just add it to the first two games as well? Yeah, so well, now yeah. all games have time trials. That's 80-plus levels of time trials for all the fans to nice. just play over again and again. So pretty excited about that. Yeah, I don't think anybody will complain about that change. No, I Are don't there any, so. like, forums that you're keeping an eye on where people say, they replaced it with a turkey club? How <laughs> dare they? They're besmirching <laughs> the legacy of Crash. Well, I think after they watch this video, I'm sure it will appear on Reddit or Neogaf, <laughs> but... Uh, but I think I think people will enjoy the the turkey. Club. It's fun. It, yeah. it fits. It fits yeah, perfectly. I, I enjoy it a lot. Uh, it just looking great though, and uh, I, I noticed the audio seems to be greatly reworked. It's it feels very faithful, but it uh, yeah. You guys totally like re-recorded the score. I want to say right. Yes, yes, we did. Uh, we did get a hold of uh, the original score as they were uh, pressed on the original discs and we were able to then take out uh, the rhythm tracks. Mm. Oh, so nice. that just pretty much helped us nail the tempo. And uh, from that, we were able to layer new instrumentation to create a, a richer track that you're, you're hearing now. This is awesome. I love, I think that there's more skill involved in trying to play in such a way that you're showing off all the deaths, yes. but not quite get, getting to a game over screen. So kudos on that. Yeah, takes great skill. So uh, Crash Bandicoot, uh, Crash 3 Warped actually first came out in 1998, I want to yes, say? Yes, 98. Oh my god, I, I can't believe it's been that long. Yeah, uh, so I feel old. <laughs> it's been almost 20 years, yeah. which is incredible to say. What, what, what do you think that we've all learned as an industry and as game designers uh, in, in the last 19 years? What have we learned? Wow. And how does that apply to uh, so, your work on this game? Yeah. So I think, um, for me, what has been interesting, at least I, I'll, I'll speak for myself, I think more so than sure. the industry as a whole. <laughs> that would be very presumptuous. <laughs> um, but for myself, I think one of the key lessons that we found in kind of modernizing Crash was, you know, we had really wanted to make sure that it was faithful and true to the challenge, but that didn't mean we couldn't go in and try to communicate some of those challenges more cleanly mm -hmm. and try to make it so that, you know, players could better understand what was being asked of them so that they weren't necessarily always just learning by trial and error, mm -hmm. but in fact could, you know, okay, I see that this similar pattern's coming up and, you know, I know how to deal with it now. I mean, these are not easy games. Uh, they are not, no. <laughs> So you Especially definitely, it looks like you've kept some of that, or a lot of that challenge here. Oh, absolutely. 
Yeah, yeah especially by the time we got to Crash 3, I think that uh, uh, the designers were really starting to stretch their legs a little bit yeah, and have yeah. some fun with the designs. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it, it's actually uh, quite amazing, almost from like a historical perspective, to see uh, the evolution from Crash 1 to Crash 3 and see, you know, Naughty Dog was learning each time mm -hmm. they put out a game, and you can see how they changed their design and, uh, um, <laughs> you know, evolved kind of their, their thinking in order to uh, get to the point that we're seeing right now, which is uh, Crash Warp. And uh, again, we have the benefit of hindsight, so we were able to apply a lot of those lessons across the board and just uh, create kind of a more ho cohesive trilogy overall. Cool. Sh should we uh, take a look at another level? Sure. And here we are. We are checking out Orange Asphalt. This is another level from Crash 3 Warped in the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, coming out uh, June 30th on PS4, I want to say. Is that right? That is correct. Look at that. Yeah. I know all my marketing. <laughs> This is cool. See, I never played Crash 3, and this is kind of bananas to, to see this. I didn't know they yeah. were doing stuff like oh, this. Oh, yeah. No, it, it's there's always been a, a trend of providing a little gameplay novelty in the Crash games. You know, starting with uh, the original Crash Bandicoot, you had hog riding, and then they uh, made that polar bear riding in Crash 2, and then they're like, well, let's add jetpack and a jet board. By Crash 3, they went all in. I mean, <laughs> motorcycles, jet skis, planes, scuba gear. Uh, it's all there, and it's all here in the Insane Trilogy as well, so... And looking better than ever, I, I gotta yeah, say, I mean... Yeah. yeah, this level's gorgeous. So here's a good example of a place where I'm sure you guys had to make a decision whether you were going to tinker with the uh, original kind of gameplay feeling mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. this level, if you were going to put your own spin on it. Yeah. Where did you guys land on that? Yeah, so... Um, the level itself is exactly the same. Uh, as it was in the original games. Uh, the handling, we tried to get as close as we could, uh, but um, in certain cases we found there were times that we could improve the handling yeah. in the vehicle mode specifically because modern pace, especially with vehicles and controls for those vehicles, has changed a little bit. Um, so whenever we thought it was a good idea, we did that. Um, you know, I think uh, that's most notable probably in like uh, the, the plane and the jetpack handling. You know, we spent some time on that. They certainly benefited from, you know, having analog controls and uh, things of that nature. That this uh, police force is not particularly efficient. I've noticed. No, <laughs> no, they're, yeah, they're. Uh, <laughs> they got room for improvement. I'd say that's that's a very polite way of putting <laughs> it. Yeah. So, uh, did you guys uh, go back and re-record Aku Aku's? famous voice line or did, uh, is that pulled straight from the original game? we did in fact yes. oh really yep. yeah we found that did you um, track down the the original guy um overall uh we found that uh the voice acting as pulled from just the disc uh really just wasn't of the quality that it needed to be for you know uh the ps4 i mean it's been 20 years yes. right yep and so, um, you know, we tracked down the original voice actors when we could, and when we couldn't, we found voice actors who had still worked with the franchise. Mm -hmm. We wanted to make sure they were familiar with it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't recall. I think it might be a new Aku Aku actor, but please. Uh, Sounds indistinguishable. Yeah. Sid, it, can you do the impression of the Aku Aku sound? Uh, I, you gotta, you gotta I've never tried it. I've never tried it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's good. All right. I just, I I just pulled that out of nowhere. We'll hire you next time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Taking a look at another level here? Yep. So this is uh, the last level we have to share with everyone today. Awesome. Uh, gone tomorrow. Uh, again, another beautiful level, uh, which is why we wanted to show it off. But the other reason is that, uh, you know, uh, Crash Fleet Warped especially has a, a huge variety of environments. And so we really wanted to, to illustrate that, that Crash has gone beyond the jungle and the ancient ruins. <laughs> and now he's in the future. A dystopian future ruled by Neocortex. Now, he, there's a huge variety of environments, but there's also a huge variety of idle animations, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm hoping we can maybe get a look at one of those right now. Oh, sure. Yeah. So do nothing. Do nothing, and we will watch and wait. Something funny is going to happen. skill comes in. Oh, uh, he looked. That was a... He did a, was a subtle one. Yeah. Yeah. Just took so, a peek. Uh, what, while we're waiting for Crash to do some awesome <laughs> idle yeah. animations, we briefly touched on this um, before we started recording, but I wanted to ask if you guys have any <laughs> like favorite idle animations. I think Crash was one of the originators and really having yeah. fun with it, mm -hmm. but there have been so many good ones over the years. Yes, I mean, certainly the, the Crash dance is a classic. <laughs> I mean, everyone loves that one. 
Um, Did you guys we, get we, mocap actors to come in? Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> these are these are all hand animated. Um, I think actually one of our more recent favorites is uh, we had a uh, idol competition. Oh. And uh, you know uh, we asked all our fans to submit ideas and. They went and, <laughs> geez, I don't know how many submissions we got. It was hundreds and hundreds of submissions. But, um, yeah, uh, we picked one, and uh, it's Aku and Crash playing volleyball with one another. Oh, nice. And, oh, that's uh, funny. It's very, it, yeah, it's very charming. So we're really happy with how that one turned out. Awesome. Our, I don't want to totally grind this to a halt, so feel yeah. free to keep playing. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, we thanks. got the good one. We got the dance in. Yeah. yeah. I love idle animations. They're such a, such an art form. Yeah, you know? They are. I like uh I think like Sonic Sonic One and Two had really good they did. animations. They did. It's kind of a lost art too. Yeah. It's not something you see a whole lot anymore. Yeah. Well, I think at this point a lot of games have just gotten so realistic that it's yeah. part of the yeah. general character's kind of date. Yeah. You know. It yeah. used to be a primary way of uh, you know sort of communicating the the personality of the yeah. character. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of that's also evolved into emotes and dances and things. That's like true. That too. That's true. Good analysis there. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, a little daunting. <laughs> this looks like maybe one of the more difficult levels. Yes, yes, this is taken from uh, toward the end of the game. So, you know, uh, actually, it's a good point to, to illustrate here is that uh, Crash 3 was also uh, the first game to introduce Crash's uh, power moves. Oh. And so he's got his, you know, supercharged body slam, but actually we're seeing a uh, good use of the uh, fruit bazooka at this point. Bam! And uh, <laughs> that certainly helps uh, make sure that Crash can uh, uh, take out some of the more difficult enemies at distance. That's huge. So uh, did you guys uh, go back and work with Naughty Dog at all when you were putting this all together just uh, for guidance, or did they generally trust you to get it right? Um, Sony, uh, we certainly have worked with you guys quite a bit. Um, but Naughty Dog actually said that they would give us our space to uh, make this oh, uh, cool. uh, remaster. And uh, what we did as a courtesy before we showed it off at PSX last year was we uh, brought that demo to them. Oh, great. And they sat down and said they loved it. And uh, right before we actually are now showing this to the public, uh, we sat down with Naughty Dog again. And uh, yeah. Oh, they had a great, great time with it, so <laughs> I guess it gets a, a big orange th th thumbs up from uh, <laughs> Naughty Dog, which is awesome. And uh, we're thrilled because, I mean, we really wanted to make sure we were doing right by Naughty Dog's uh, uh, creation here. This nice. is where it all began. Yep. Well, actually, it didn't. They were around before that, too. They did a lot of other games. Yeah. But this is why I think what really, yeah, think really got them really on the map. Kind of put yeah. Them on the map yeah. Crash it looks kind of like the the first the first uh, mascot I remember PlayStation ever really having. Yeah, I mean it was central to PlayStation's identity, at least in the United States, yep. uh, for the first several years. Yeah. Do you guys have that big orange bodysuit around <laughs> the office somewhere? It, it is sitting in somebody's office right now. Yes. <laughs> we have it. Uh, well, people have asked megaphone. me to wear it, but from what I've heard, it's a little uncomfortable to wear. So. <laughs> I mean, that thing's like a it's it's priceless. Yeah. No, it's it's. It, it when I when I saw that in person, it, it did it did tug my heartstrings a little bit. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's like George Washington's wo oh. wooden teeth, or <laughs> you know <laughs> Betsy Ross's like original flag or something. You know, yeah. you gotta you gotta put that in a museum. Look at all the nice reflections yep. and stuff. Ooh, oh, okay. yeah, that was that was something actually that the original game did that our engine did not do. Interesting. Oh. And we were like, oh geez, I guess we gotta put reflections in our game. Really. So, uh, yeah, we, it was uh, like just like that. You're like, well, we got to have these reflections. I, I, that's that's the level of detail that you know, uh, you know, this has to be as people remember it. And wow, people remember reflections. So I feel like reflections are really hard to get right too. Even a lot of modern games have a hard time with it. They do, yeah. No expense spared. Yep. Now, one thing that the original game didn't have that we decided to put in, um, which you know we've touched on in the past, is uh, fur. Mm. And uh, that was something where uh, basically, I don't know, we were probably on our maybe fourth or fifth version of the Crash model, and we knew something just <laughs> wasn't right about him. Just didn't seem right. Mm -hmm. And uh, we eventually said, yeah, no, we've got to write a fur shader for Crash. <laughs> and uh, really, it's just because, you know, the rest of the environment, you know, we had planned to be so detailed, but, you know, Crash just didn't feel detailed enough. 
And so we implemented the first shader, and uh, I think it's turned out fantastic. Yeah, he actually, and, he looks really good. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the artists, you know, uh, once you give them a tool, they're like, oh, so who else can we put fur on? Yeah. Like, oh, you could do it. bosses, you know, maybe some of Crash's friends, you know, Polar. They're like, okay, cool. How about the goat? Can we put fur on the goat? <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh! yeah. <laughs> and so pretty much uh, soon enough, yeah, fur's everywhere in the game. I, this is by it's far covered probably... covered in fur. Yeah. <laughs> furriest this, game ever. This is the furriest game ever. <laughs> it is. <laughs> the truest sense so well I mean Dan I gotta say it just it looks tremendous um, I really love to see um, just a classic series like this treated with such love and, and, and care well thank you and uh, you know I, w I think we can all only hope that uh, that, that other developers take uh, you know some, some inspiration here from from the uh, the leadership you've provided on this and kind of up their game a little on the remaster front this is uh, it's a whole new experience yet strangely faithful to the original game well, thank you. That means that we've done our job. <laughs> you yeah, sure you have. really struck an incredible balance here. Are there any other uh, just general like quality of life enhancements you guys are making, either when you're talking about the menus or just Oh, the absolutely. Absolutely. I think, um, you know, while the core gameplay, you know, we've really tried to make sure we've, you know, struck that balance. I think there were certainly room uh, to make improvements in... Uh, quality of life areas. I mean, to give you an example, the uh, first game, save game system was fairly non-existent, so <laughs> we knew we had to overhaul that. And uh, even within kind of uh, the manual system, save game system that I had in the original game, we decided that, you know, uh, a lot of players just use automatic saving these days. So, yeah. mm -hmm. so we've added some conveniences like that. You know, we've unified the, the user interface and the pause menu to just be a lot more accessible so that players can easily just pick up and play and get into the game. So nice. I mean, it just exceeds my expectations. Yeah, I like those little beauty shots you do when you have the god rays streaming through. I mean, not what I think of when I think about Crash Bandicoot, but uh, I'm loving it. Cool. All right, we are almost at the end. Time for the big finish. Come on, you got it. <laughs> and there we are. Nice. So that is Crash 3 Warped as part of uh, Crash Bandicoot the Insane Trilogy. Uh, anything anything we missed? Anything else you want to make sure we talk about here? I want to say to the PlayStation fans, you know, thank you, I guess. I mean, basically, uh, it was their desire to, you know, really see a Crash remaster that uh, kind of gave us this opportunity to to make it so we're, we're excited to get it into their hands uh, come June 30th fantastic Dan thank you very much that's Crash Bandicoot the Insane Trilogy out June 30th on PS4 Sid thanks for joining us and uh, Dan thank you for joining us stay tuned we'll have more on Crash soon PlayStation